The Innovation Study Centre was established in 2003. Funded by the Engineering and Physical Sciences Research Council, the first five years focused on innovation in the built environment. As the research developed, the scope of the centre expanded and in 2008, the ISC's funding was extended for another five years. The Innovation Study Centre conducts multidisciplinary research on the innovation process in the science and engineering industries, from knowledge creation to commercialisation. Working closely with government, leading international firms and fast-growing small high-tech companies, ISC research has had a major impact on policy and practice. Professor David Gann, previously co-director of the Innovation Studies Centre, is now Vice President at Imperial College London, responsible for development and innovation. We were fortunate to be able to work with Heathrow Airport on Terminal 5, one of the biggest projects of its time, and take lessons from there and help to show how those could be used in the development of the Olympic sites. And on from that into Crossrail. We work with a number of the world's leading technology companies to help develop better ways of managing knowledge for innovation. So the big challenge for innovation is how you get coherence and manage routine activities and develop the possibility of putting new technology and new processes together. And of course, if you're building the Olympics, you've got to finish it on time. So you don't want to risk it by innovation in the wrong place. I've been delivering mega projects in the UK for about 10 years now and at the same time trying to move the industry forward. There are two good examples. The first is Terminal 5, where we created an environment where people could think differently and could innovate. And what I asked ISC for Imperial to do is to record what we've done in order to transfer this to the next mega project. Now I find myself Chief Executive of Crossrail wanting to do the same thing, looking forward to the next five years. And in doing that, we've asked Imperial, deep in science and technology, with a business school attached and with this focus on entrepreneurial and innovation. And those three combinations to me give a great example of a unique university that is able to give me what I want to help deliver my mega projects and to help make the industry a better place. Professor Eamon Salter was also co-director of the Innovation Study Centre and led the knowledge mapping project with Arup. Arup had a lot of information about the skills of their staff, but it was mostly unstructured. So we work with them to map the skills of their staff, try to understand how uh, new skills were emerging, um, different offices uh, have different skills, they can combine in a new way. So we work with them very closely to try to uh, use this information to get a better understanding of how they can innovate on their projects. We came to Imperial because of the long-term relationship with the business school. Um, we've had some very productive collaboration in the past. And the impact of our research is something that's very important to us and which the board has been asking us to account for to generate a process where we can do some measurements. So it seemed a really good thing to do to present that as a, a challenge from Arup to Imperial College Business School. And out of that came a, an interesting methodology, the analysis of a, a lot of our investments in research over the last probably six years or so. And then some conclusions which were really for us quite interesting and surprising about the business impact according to different time frames for that research. So I guess retrospectively the thought that the longer term time frames had the biggest impact shouldn't be surprising but that's what the uh, research has found and that's now led us to understand and profile how we put new money into research going forward. ISC members also work closely with government. Dr Keith Smith, Senior Research Fellow, was seconded to the Department for Business Innovation and Skills as Head of Innovation Analysis and wrote the Innovation and Research Strategy. This has been a very powerful document because it identifies key areas that you might expect where the British economy is strong for innovation in aerospace and, for example, in automotive. It also identifies new areas where we have strengths that perhaps are being hidden um, and that we can really build upon. For example, in digital economy, in knowledge intensive business services and these areas come through strongly in Keith's work and are now enjoying key support from government and I think will lead to uh, good activities that uh, will generate jobs and growth in the British economy. Our legacy first and foremost is in the strength of our academic work and the citations we have for our papers and the use of our knowledge that we've created around the world. We've created a brand for our evidence-based uh, style of working and researching in areas that are unearthing new subjects to work on, such as business model innovation and our work in the digital economy.